Hello and welcome to the Dreger presentation on the new Exact 7000 product. We're very pleased to have the opportunity to address the audience here today with some insight into the product which we launched in October of 2020. Unfortunately, we uh, wish we had the opportunity to be live, but uh, as we know, so many of these things today we're doing virtually. So we would like to do this presentation with an introduction to the product itself, the technology behind the product, to give you some insight as to what's happening behind the scenes, and to conduct a couple of demonstrations so that we have a keener understanding of how the product is actually operating. So with that, I'd like to mention with this first slide the actual product consists of a, a two-component system, so you could liken it to a, a detector tube system of tubes and pumps. In this case, we have microtubes and the Exact 7000 device. The system is actually geared for multi-gas detection from the standpoint that we can do a multiple number of different analytes, so gases and vapors. Uh, and one of the unique um, opportunities with this system is to capture very low concentrations, many in the low PPB range for, in particular, some carcinogens such as benzene, 1,3-butadiene, formaldehyde, ethylene oxide, and also mercury. At least those were the initial introduction into the marketplace with this product. It's capable of doing clearance measurements uh, prior to entry. We have the capability of using a remote system that gets us out to 147 feet. It's ideal for workplace exposure measurements that are currently being used to assess the exposure level in regard to permissible exposure level or TLV level concentrations. It can be used for emission as well as environmental checks and also indoor air measurements, uh, for instance, in a office, home, or school setting. The device, as I mentioned, consists of the analyzer or the Exact 7000. And what I'm trying to show on this so slide from, from left to right are some of the possible scenarios which an end user might encounter when using the device. So on the first uh, image on the left side there, we show simply the device itself. The next image is showing a PPB booster tube attached to the inlet of the device. The PPB booster tube is used for some of these ultra-low part per billion uh, in the single digit part per billion range for benzene and butadiene. The third image from the left is showing the remote pump, and it's the same remote pump, the Exam Mark II pump that we use for many of the Dreger monitors for remote sample taking applications, either using um, FKM hose, Tigon hose material, or in some cases telescopic or bar probes for some specialized applications. And finally, on the right side, that's simply the device with the shoulder strap attachment for transportation. Do you want to mention the battery uh, or power options, if you will? It operates using alkaline or lithium ion batteries. It does not use any rechargeable or have any rechargeable type options available. The lithium batteries uh, by far give the longest operational or runtime. The batteries that it operates on are, are double A size. It uses five of them, and it is the power supply for the device itself. The remote pump in this case actually operates on its own separate uh, power supply. So I'd like to give a little bit of insight into the technology as I gave some reference to or implied uh, earlier on in the presentation. So we talk about microtubes, and for those of you familiar with some of the Draeger systems, 
you might say they look a bit like the CMS chips. And in fact, they are very similar uh, with the exception that in this case, all the relevant information for the calibration is contained in the RFID tag. So each microtube contains 10 measurement capillaries for measurements of various hazardous substances with each microtube dedicated to a specific analyte, such as benzene or 1,3-butadiene. And only during the start of the measurement are the tips of these capillaries broken and then connected to the uh, pneumatic pump system within the device. The capillaries are fairly well protected from environmental influences. The blue ceiling septums you see here uh, at both ends provide a very gas-tight seal to the pump system during the measurement. The relevant information, as I say, regarding the calibration for each analyte to some degree is printed on the RFID tag. You'll find the name, the measurement range, and also the part number. But then additional information with regards to the uh, flow rate, the exposure time, the color channels, and the evaluation of the front tracking algorithm, as we call it, which I'll explain in a little more detail here in just a bit, for each particular microtube is encoded in the RFID tag. So basically that means that all relevant information about carrying out a measurement is stored here and is valid over the shelf life of the microtubes. And I also do want to mention that at this juncture that each microtube actually has a one-year shelf life from the time it leaves our facility in, in Memphis. So to give a quick overview of how the system operates, I'd like to mention that basically we have a system here that we pass a gas sample through a small capillary tube. It's, it's roughly one millimeter in diameter. It's drawn through that capillary tube using a pneumatic system, which consists of a, uh, a pump and also a, a mass uh, airflow sensor. And the overall interpretation of the color reaction is carried out using an optical system designed by Dreger. The optical system is uh, somewhat unique in that we have uh, a, an LED, a mirror and lens system, and also a CMOS sensor making up this system. The LED actually emits a constant white light over the uh, entire capillary, and the mirror system ensures that that capillary is uniformly illuminated during the measurement cycle. The lens system enhances the resolution of the CMOS image. So what is a CMOS sensor? Well, CMOS is, is an acronym for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. And basically, in layman's terms, what, what it is, is a means to convert light into electrical signals, which we then use to give a simple digital display in the readout. So what is a CMOS sensor at the end of the day? It's basically that technology that we have in all of our smartphones that give us those high-resolution digital images that we like to share with our family and our friends. So it's that sort of technology that Draeger have designed into this system. On this slide, I'd like to talk a little bit about the front tracking algorithm used for interpretation of the color change on the different capillaries. What you see here on the right side is a um, high magnification of what a capillary looks like to the optical system. So you'll see some light and some dark and some sparkly um, within the capillary itself. So this is what the optical system is, is, is looking like. Prior to the start of a measurement, we actually carry out a filtering process to compensate for these irregularities, which, which you can see here only because we've magnified it, of the granulate in the capillary. And so that's what we have here at, at time zero. This is prior to a measurement. Then uh, a reference image is obtained from this process 
and that will be used as the standard going forward to compare images over the course of the measurement. So you could look at it as, in effect, establishing a baseline. After the start of the measurement, the color intensity change is calculated using that reference. So initially, the change intensity is too weak to detect a color front. That's what we show here in time one. However, as the discoloration progresses, the intensity becomes uh, detectable because of the presence of the uh, gas or vapor molecules in the reaction. And that's what we're seeing now in time two and time three and time four as the color change develops. The digital camera in the device is actually taking upwards of 480 images per minute. And it's the measured speeds which are being compared with those of the prior images throughout the course of this measurement. And it's, uh, if you will, the rate at which these images are changing that are converted into a concentration value using the calibration curve that is the information encoded in the RFID tag. So what's really interesting about this is that if we have a concentration actually present, the true concentration, that is below the detectable limit of the microtube, the device will stop the measurement about halfway through and rather than run the full course of the measurement, display what you see here on the bottom of this slide below uh, the text on the left-hand side. And you'll see that there is a result below the measuring range. And that is the means by which we can save the customer a bit of time in the event of a very low concentration. Conversely, and even more importantly, for my opinion, is this option. Let's say you were taking a benzene measurement and you expected the concentration to be rather low. And in reality, due to whatever condition was residing at the time, it was much higher than you anticipated. The device will literally within seconds interpret that with a discoloration in the capillary and very quickly stop the measurement and present this in the display so that the user have an early warning that the concentration was perhaps much uh, higher than they had anticipated. And I think that's a significant advantage, particularly when dealing with some of these carcinogens. On this slide, I'd just like to mention the current analytes that are detectable using the uh, exact 7,000 microtube system. We launched with about 14 and have just recently added uh, another 10 to the portfolio. So one thing that I wanted to mention, because I have had some questions recently, people trying to look at this and compare it to the Draeger CMS system. So what's really different? So what I've highlighted here, what we want to announce or, or, or proclaim here with this slide is that lower detection limits into the PPB range, reduce sampling times. That was uh, something that we like to, to highlight. For instance, the benzene CMS chip in this range, 0.2 to 10, up to 300 seconds. We've cut that time in half with the microtubes and also lowered it by 50 parts per billion to 0.15. Similar scenario with butadiene, and we have a similar scenario with a number of the different analytes that are capable of being measured with this system. I hadn't mentioned to this point, but we also have data logging we can actually set up using the Draeger CC Vision platform up to 20 specific locations within the device, which are possible for the user during the course of a measurement to select and specify that specific location. And there are two lines of information available with up to 20 characters per line. So you can very well define what that particular measurement location was in a given plant or otherwise. So at this point in time, what I'd like to do is transition to some demonstrations as to how the system operates, first with the demo tube, microtube, also with a um, hydrogen sulfide microtube, and finally with a carbon monoxide microtube. And so with that, we'll transition to the camera. 
Okay, so with that, we're going to go ahead and actually do a demonstration to show how the device operates using the demo microtube, which, by the way, is something that uh, is included with each analyzer. So we'll press and hold the OK button to turn the device on. And I apologize for the camera. It'll go through a self-test. And now get the option to insert the microtube. So I'll open the demo microtube. This only runs for about 20 seconds. Insert it through the inlet at the bottom. You press it to the point where the device takes hold of the microtube and, and retracts it. And then in the display, we actually see that we have a demo microtube, a fictitious range here, part number, batch, and the number of measurements remaining, six measurements remaining. We have the chevron here. When we have this chevron, that's the indication that we're available to take a measurement or initiate a measurement. Each time the screen goes down, we need to press the OK or any of these buttons to bring the light back up. Once the light is on, we can then proceed either into the menu, eject the microtube, or to commence with a measurement, as I'm about to do. So now we have in the display that it is actually taking a measurement. As I say, this is a demonstration, so it runs for roughly 20 seconds, just to show the basic operation principle behind the system. At the conclusion of the measurement, we have the green LED illuminated, also the bar behind the analyte, in this case it reads demo, turns green so that the operator understands the measurement has been completed. The device also have the um, sort of GPS coordinate symbol over here. That's the means by which we can access the uh, data logger. And I can use this arrow to scroll down. I'm going to scroll to North Huntington, Pennsylvania. I'm going to select that. It then tells me the measurement result, the location code, and I acknowledge it. And so now it's at this point in time that if I want to eject the chip microtube, I simply press the button below the microtube symbol. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my calibration gas. Got a Draeger Cal gas here, which is H2S, expired June of 2021. It's a 10 ppm concentration. And I'm going to connect my special test jig I have here to the system. my H2S microtube into the device. This microtube has a range from 0.1 to 50 parts per million. It's loading. It has loaded. I'm now going to open up my CalGas here and I'll connect my adapter to the inlet of the device. And I'll now commence the measurement. So what's happening at this moment is we're drawing the gas from a Y splitter attached to my calibration gas here in through the capillary. And it is now activating the optical system to observe the intensity of the color change and the time duration for that color metric reaction. At the conclusion of the measurement, I think this is going to run for more or less 40 seconds or so, the green LED will be illuminated, 
The gray bar behind hydrogen sulfide will also turn green, and we'll have in our display the resultant concentration. And I think as you all can see, uh, had a nice result, nice uh, positive result compared to the 10 ppm calibration gas of 10 parts per million. So at this point, I'm going to save this measurement result. Again, clicking the button below the um, GPS type symbol. And I'm going to use the down arrow to scroll through. And I'll select Northanica, Pennsylvania again. Okay. Measurement results been saved. Say OK. And I'm going to turn off my calibration gas, remove the adapter, and I'm going to eject the hydrogen sulfide microtube. Finally, I'd like to do a demonstration using the carbon monoxide microtube, which has a measurement range from 2 to 1,000 parts per million. And for this demonstration, we will use a calibration gas mixture, which has hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, methane, and oxygen in a nitrogen balance. There is 100 part per million of carbon monoxide, and this particular calibration gas has an expiration date of March 2023. So our device is on. We have the prompt to insert the microtube. So we'll insert the microtube here. Get it to a point where the device takes control of it. It's loading. It's been loaded. So we now have the option to start the measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the calibration gas, allowing it to flush for just a few seconds. And I'll connect the adapter here to the inlet. And we'll initiate the measurement. So during the course of the measurement, the operator has some awareness that a measurement is taking place by this circular symbol and also the word measuring in the display. As the measurement is taking place, the air sample, in this case the background is nitrogen, or the balance is nitrogen gas, is being drawn through the capillary. The optical system is interpreting the uh, intensity of the color reaction as well as the time for that reaction. And at the conclusion of the measurement, the LED will illuminate green and the background behind carbon monoxide, in this case, will also illuminate green. So in this case, we got a measurement of 106 parts per million. So we'll go ahead and save that measurement result again. Toggle down to North Huntington. And we'll say OK. We'll acknowledge that we've saved that measurement result. And now what I'm going to do is turn the gas off. I'm going to eject the microtube. disconnect my sampling line, and to turn the device off, press and hold for a 3, 2, 1 countdown. And as it's shutting down, the device will actually purge the entire pneumatic system for a period of about 10 seconds to ensure that it's completely purged prior to the next measurement from the device is next actuated. So. We've done the demonstrations. We've taken a look at how the system operates. I also want to mention uh, at the conclusion of this presentation today that we do have a new Draeger detector tube handbook available, which is now the Draeger tubes and microtubes handbook. So that's a very good resource for all the information on the microtubes regarding measurement range, uh, temperature and humidity, um, flushing times if using a remote system. And so all of that information is available in the, in the new handbook, which is currently available digitally. And we also have a uh, Android uh, slash iOS uh, compatible tube app, which can be used 
um, and will be adapted as well for our uh, aero test sampling tube for testing the pressed air. That is a means by which we can capture the measurement information as well as temperature, pressure, relative humidity information from detector tube measurements and actually send that information either in a text format or an email to provide confirmation of measurements um, taken real time at a particular location or, or a particular site. I'd like to thank you today for the time and I'd also like to say that uh, in summary, um, we appreciate the opportunity to discuss or introduce the Exact 7000 with the microtubes, give you some insight into the technology behind the system, and um, again, for additional information, you could also access our website at www.dreger.com. Thank you very much and have a good day.